Gospel according to Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but they had no marital relations until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. I'm sure that had to be some conversation, and I'm sure there's a reason why it wasn't recorded in Scripture. <clears throat> but there had to be well discussion. When Mary came to Joseph to say, guess what? You're going to be a daddy. <laughs> because Joseph knew that there was no way on earth that it would have been his. <coughs> and he was right. Now in those days, many of us don't have quite an appreciation, I think, of what that all meant. First of all, in our lectionary, it says they were engaged. Well. Their engagement is not like our engagement. It was a betrothal. That was actually a legal covenant, by the way. That was made between two families, and it was binding. And there were very few things that could actually break that covenant. And usually there were ramifications involved. It's not like today when you're engaged and, well, you have an argument, and you call it quits. No harm, no foul. And yes, every once in a while, someone goes to Judge Judy because they shelled out $20,000 to pay for this wedding, and it didn't happen, and they want to get reimbursed. But in the day of Jesus, it was more serious than that. <coughs> and it was very serious in this case. Because in this case, there was a man and a woman betrothed to one another, and the woman is pregnant and not by this man. Now, there are two choices that Joseph could make. Joseph had every right, under the law in Deuteronomy, he had every right to, as it says in our scripture, and the word isn't as specific as it should be, he could dismiss her. <coughs> the actual translation has been translated to divorce. You see, that's how serious this was. That's how binding this was. It wasn't just an engagement, and to get rid of it, it would be almost like a divorce. It was serious business. That was first choice. Second choice he had, the very right that he had, was to expose her for what he thought she was, drag her out into the public forum, out in the middle of the town square, to announce that she was pregnant with someone else's child, and he could therefore pick up any stone he found and hurl it at her, and everyone that was around would have to do the same until she was dead. <clears throat> that was his second choice. We are told in our scripture that he was a righteous man. In other words, that he had heard the word of God, that he had studied the word of God, that he went to the synagogue, that he understood 
that God indeed had given us commandments, but I think that he was a righteous man in the fact that he understood that there is the letter of the law and there is the spirit of the law. And I think that he further understood that he himself was a sinful person, that he himself had done wrong in the eyes of God, and yet that God had allowed him to still live. That God indeed must be a God of justice and mercy, and therefore, if God is, then I should be as well. And that's why he decided, as our scripture says, to dismiss her. <clears throat> not to cause her any public embarrassment, not to drag her name through the mud. In fact, by Joseph doing it that way, it was his name and reputation that would be sullied. He was basically saying, look, we fooled around, she's pregnant, I don't want to deal with her anymore, it's on me. And yes, it would have cost him a lot. He could have been shunned by some of the people. I'm certain that he may have lost his job, or the people who were his clients probably would have no longer been so. And yet out of love for God, and I think out of love for Mary, he did what he planned on what he was going to do. He took the second option. I'm sure that that night was a very restless night. I'm sure that as he went home, I'm sure that going through his mind was, how could this happen? Why did this happen? And then I'm sure he got around to saying, God, why did you let this happen? Because after all, that's what we do, is it not? And I'm sure as he was asking those questions, as he was trying to search through his mind how he might have prevented this, what he could have done differently, I'm sure he was wracked with guilt and pain and heartache and everything else that goes along with this, trying to figure out maybe, just maybe, I could have done something. Somewhere through the night, he fell asleep. And through the night, an angel came to him. And the angel said, Joseph, here's what God wants you to do. You think that you only have two options, God's going to give you a third option. It's the best option. It's the one that God wants you to take. But ultimately, it will be your decision. What God asks you to do, Joseph, is this. First and foremost, believe in Him and believe in what I have to say to you. That Mary is indeed pregnant, but the child that she is carrying came upon her by way of God's Holy Spirit. And so this child that she carries is God. That He is the Son of God. And that when he is born, you shall call him Jesus. And as we know, that name means that God saves. Of course, the angel leaves. Joseph wakes up. And he picks the third option. He was willing to trust in God. He was willing to take whatever flack may come his way from the townspeople and family members and everything else if they were to find out, but he was willing to trust God. And I'm sure that it had to be somewhat confusing for Mary because when they, they departed last, I'm sure she was thinking that nothing good was going to happen from that discussion. I can't imagine her surprise when he searched her out, found her, wrapped his arms around her and said, I love you. I understand. I believe you. We shall have this child. And we shall name him Jesus. And he shall save. <clears throat> you see, that's what we are called to do in our lives. To trust God, even though it doesn't make sense. That there are times that things happen in lives Especially in our lives, when we just look and think, why? What could I have done differently? Why is this happening, especially now? God, this is going to mess everything up. 
It's going to change everything, God. It's going to be hard, God. And yet God would come to us as well and say, trust in me. Know that I am with you. You see, that's where that name Emmanuel comes in, isn't it? God is with us. And he promises to be with us every step of the way. That I will be with you even until the end of days, he tells us. And if you believe in me, no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it is to conceive or comprehend, no matter what the world says, trust in me. And it will work out. Know that I will guide you. Know that I am with you. And so Joseph took the third option. And Joseph indeed did witness this son come into the world. And the angels announced it to the shepherds and to all who would listen. And the world would be different. The world would change. We would be different. That by trusting in God, things that have been set in motion since before time even began started to bear fruit. And it was because he trusted in this angel. I know during this Christmas time, we do tend to focus a lot upon this manger scene, and I would hope that we could do that, but I hope that we could stand in awe, not just of the one who was born in that manger, but of his parents, of this Mary and Joseph, these two people who up until that time were just looking forward to a normal life, a life that, well, could be considered a good life. A life where they had it all figured out. A life where they knew, well, what was going to happen day to day. But then things changed, and life got chaotic, and life got traumatic, and life got blown way out of the water. And yet, through all of that, they both chose to believe. They both chose to trust. That no matter where God would lead them, He would lead them in many different places. That by trusting in God, it would all work out. And that is what God asks you to do today. Trust. Know that I am there. And that wherever I lead you, I will be with you. No matter what challenge you face, I will help you through it. No matter what <coughs> obstacles are in your way, I will help you to overcome them. Or maybe, I will help you to change direction so that you no longer are confronted with that obstacle. Maybe that pathway you were on was the wrong one. We won't know. Until we trust, until we have that faith, until we know that God 